Good evening to everyone and welcome to today's wonderful evening with Dr. Murli Bharadwaj. Today we will do, we continue our revision of sleep promoting medicine, SPM. There are totally 3000 plus points in the entire preventive medicine. You have to be perfect. If you are good with these 3,000 points, 20 out of 200 questions which come from PSM, you will be able to answer confidently. Welcome to all the online students. And uh, every day, evening 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., two hours, we discuss around 200 points. And totally 3,000 points we cover in 30 hours. So that is a plan. So already we are one third of our journey in this uh, momentous discussion on rapid revision of preventive medicine within 3,000 high yield facts for the tomorrow's exam. So thanks for joining the session and let's make the great beginning doctor. Can the online students can punch whether the voice is loud and clear for all of you? The voice is loud and clear for all of you. Can you please check, Suresh? Yeah? Right. So, doctor. Criterion validity. So, typically, we are discussing about the screening test in our last class. Screening test, diagnostic test. There are the two things that you need to know. So criterion validity means there is always a gold standard. We compare to that gold standard. Just like even in the classroom, there is one guy who is regularly getting distinctions and gold medals. We compare with that guy. So comparing with a reference or a gold standard is called criterion validity. And of all the various ways of validity of a screening test, criterion validity is always the best measure of validity is what you need to remember. So obviously a criterion validity has a sensitivity and also specificity. Now what is the meaning of precision of a screening test? Precision of the screening tests. Good to see five online classmates. Can you please punch whether the voice is loud and clear for all of you? Precision is repeatability, reliability, consistency, and reproducibility of a test is what you need to remember. Then what happened by accuracy? Accuracy is a screening test is doing what it is measuring. So there is an actual value and a value measured by the screening test. How close is this measured value to the actual or the true value is called accuracy. So validity and accuracy are synonymous with each other. Now what are the various tests? for the accuracy, validity. Mean chart, Levy Jennings chart, Schubert control chart, they're all testing what, doctor? Accuracy is the one which is being tested, is what you need to remember. Here, we need to know two important concepts. Thank you, Gopi, for uh, a quick feedback that the voice is loud and clear. So, screening test can be used in series. Screening test can be used in parallel. What is the meaning of it? There is a population in New Delhi. You have subjected it first with complete urine examination and checking for the urinary glucose levels is one test. Following that, you have done with a second screening test. 
that is checking the fasting blood sugar using the glucometer suppose if you use the second screening test only on those individuals who are positive in the first screening test that is those who are having a complete urinary examination showing urinary glucose positive on them if you use the fasting blood sugar checking of glucometer then that is called screening test used in series is what you need to remember now if you use two tests one screening test a let us say urine for sugar and there is a second screening test which is the fasting blood sugar if you use two tests in series then the combined sensitivity of these two tests is sensitivity of the first test multiplied by the sensitivity of the second test if you use it in series this is the most frequently tested question then combined specificity of two tests specificity you have used urine for glucose is one test followed by the fasting blood sugar with the glucometer then combined the specificity of these two tests if you use them in series the e is specificity of the first test plus specificity of second test minus specificity of the first test multiplied by specificity of the second test that is what you need to remember that means let us say specificity of the first test is 0.5 second test is 0.5 so 0.5 plus 0.5 minus 0.5 into 0.5 so 0.5 plus 0.5 is 1 minus 0.5 into 0.5 is 0.25 and that is equal to 0.75 become the combined specificity of the two tests a and b which are in series is what you need to remember then what do you mean by screening tests used in parallel suppose if you use both the urine for glucose and the fasting blood sugar by glucometer together in a person for screening that is called screening test used in parallel is what you need to remember so whenever you use screening test in parallel then also there is a combined sensitivity combined specificity which you have to be very clear about right so if you use it in parallel then combined sensitivity is sensitivity of a plus sensitivity of b minus sensitivity of a multiplied by sensitivity of b is what you need to remember so whenever you use two screening tests in parallel then what is their combined specificity specificity of a multiplied by specificity of b so that is the difference between parallel and the series so you have series you have parallel all right you will remember then if you talk about specificity if you use in parallel it is specificity of a multiplied by b whereas if you use it in uh, uh, if you look at sensitivity if you use two tests in series then sensitivity of a multiplied by b whereas if you use it in uh, series then what is specificity we have just checked it specificity what is specificity specificity of a plus specificity of b a plus b minus a into b is the specificity combined specificity if you use it in series then what is combined sensitivity if you use in parallel sensitivity of a plus sensitivity of b minus a into b if you use it in parallel 
So this is what you need to basically remember. So one of the favorite questions asked by the examiner is, if you do a screening test in series, series means one first test you have done, and only the people who are positive in the first test, to them only you have done the uh, test two, test two, that is called series. If you use two diagnostic tests, I mean screening tests in series, then their combined sensitivity decreases, combined specificity increases, combined positive predictive value increases, combined negative predictive value decreases. item You need to use a little bit of logic to remember. Last 50 days, 30 days, mein, revision karne wale maal mein add karo isko. That is very, very important, doctor. Right? Now, if you use the screening test in parallel, then their combined sensitivity increases, specificity decreases, positive predictive value decreases, but negative predictive value increases if you use uh, them in parallel, is what you need to remember. So, what is Bayes' theorem? Bayes' theorem is a very important question. The relationship between positive predictive value of a screening test and the sensitivity, specificity, and prevalence is called Bayes' theorem. This is one of the frequently asked MCQ in the NEET PG exam, doctor, you got to be very sure about. So, positive predictive value is equal to sensitivity into prevalence divided by sensitivity into prevalence plus 1 minus specificity into 1 minus prevalence into 100. A formula, sure short animal question. Hai. Examiner will give you sensitivity, prevalence, specificity, ask you to calculate the PPV. Sometimes he will give PPV, he will give sensitivity, he will give prevalence and ask you to calculate specificity. So you should know the formula. Sensitivity into prevalence divided by sensitivity into prevalence plus 1 minus specificity into 1 minus prevalence into 100 will give you positive predictive value is what you need to remember. That is the base theorem. So you should remember positive predictive value is directly proportional to prevalence. Negative predictive value is inversely proportional to prevalence. This is one of the very, very important questions. So how do you calculate negative predictive value based on sensitivity, specificity and prevalence? Specificity into 1 minus prevalence divided by specificity into 1 minus prevalence plus 1 minus sensitivity into prevalence. The whole thing into 100 will give you negative predictive value. Another dirty formula. You have to mug it. And definitely this will come in the tomorrow's exam. Now, when do you do screening? What type of conditions do you do screening? Is a very, very important question, doctor. Screening is done on apparently healthy individuals. On healthy people, you do screening. It is applied to groups and populations, not individuals, groups and populations. And the test results of a screening are arbitrary and final. And it is based on one criteria or cutoff. And cost is relatively cheaper. And the time taken is relatively rapid with the screening test. They are relatively inaccurate. And they cannot be used as a basis to treat screening tests. And it is an initiative started by an investigator who is an epidemiologist who is using the screening test on a group or a population who are apparently healthy. You need to remember the seven important properties, nine important properties of screening tests. 
Whereas if you look at diagnostic test, diagnostic test is done in the people who are cases. That is, signs and symptoms are there in the patient. Diagnostic test is done on the individuals, not on the groups and populations. And the test results are not final, they are modifiable. You have done ECG is a diagnostic test, but it is not final. You will do eco, you will do angio, you will do excise stress test, so many things. Diagnostic test is based on the signs, symptoms and lab findings. They are expensive, time consuming, but they are accurate and they can be used as a basis for treatment. And the initiative comes from the patient who has a complaint, not from a investigator. That is what you need to basically remember. Now, doctor, if you say this is a useful screening test, usefulness of a screening test, how do you identify? Usefulness of a screening test is given by sensitivity, sensitivity, not specificity, is the usefulness. And it, what is the statistical index of diagnostic accuracy? Sensitivity is what you need to remember. What is the diagnostic power of a screening test? Predictive accuracy, positive predictive value we calculate. No, that is a diagnostic power of a screening test. Diagnostic power of a screening test to correctly identify the disease is positive predictive value. Diagnostic test of a screening test to correctly exclude a disease is negative predictive value is what you need to remember. So predictive value of a screening test, what is it dependent on? It is dependent on sensitivity, specificity, and also prevalence of the disease in the population. These are the three characters on which it is dependent is what you need to remember. Now, doctor, a test which has a very high specificity has a very low type 1 error. If you are using a highly specific screening test, it has a very low type 1 error. Achha bhaiya, type 1 error is what? Type 2 error is what? Type 1 error typically if uh, a screening test is used and uh, toda Null, I mean, toda hypothesis is hypothesis is wrong. You false positively, false positively concluded that hypothesis is right. So false positives create type one error. Then false negatives create type 2 error. So the woman is not pregnant, you are calling her pregnant. That is type 2 error. So the man is never pregnant, you are calling him pregnant, which is false positive pregnancy, which is a type 1 error. That's what you need to remember. So if the diagnostic test is highly specific, then the type 1 error, false positives will be very low. That's what you need to basically remember. So false positive rate is 1 minus specificity. It is the specificity which decides. A highly specific test will decrease the false positive rate. And a very low type 1 error is what you need to remember. False negative rate is dependent on sensitivity, 1 minus sensitivity, that is type 2 error. Type 2 error is dependent on 
sensitivity sensitivity type 1 error type 1 error is dependent on specificity higher the specificity lower is the type 1 error higher the sensitivity lower will be the type 2 error that is a false negative that is what you have to emphatically remember and the power of the test is sensitivity and sensitivity is 1 minus beta error is what you need to remember beta is also called type 2 error so 1 minus beta error will give you the power of the test which is sensitivity is what you need to remember so what is a receiver operating characteristic curve roc curve so basically if you take the sensitivity and 1 minus specificity or true positive rate and false positive rate so sensitivity represents true positive one minus specificity represent false positive if you are plotting a graph between the two sensitivity and one minus specificity you get receiver operating characteristic curve is what you need to remember so efficiency of a screening test it is the percentage of the times that the test gives the correct answer compared to the total number of tests is called efficiency obviously you have taken a mock test continuously if the mock test is made so hard that you are getting very 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 low scores we are wrongly implicating you that you won't get the seat so that is the reason suppose we conduct 10 mock tests out of them 5 to 6 mock tests correctly identifies your caliber then the efficiency is good that's what you need to remember efficiency of the screening test what is the formula true positives plus true negatives divided by true positives plus true negatives plus false positives plus false negatives into 100 will give you the efficiency efficiency of the screening test is what you need to remember so if you want to know the performance of a screening test yudans j statistic called yudans index is the single statistics that captures the performance of the test so you have one minus specificity plotted against sensitivity yudans j statistic is what you need to remember so yudans j statistic yudans index is sensitivity plus specificity minus 1 will give you yudans j statistic is what you need to remember now what are the various screening tests that we often use good to see ganesh reddy gopi and many more who are all online very good doctor under national program for prevention of and control of diabetes cardiovascular disease stroke is all called non communicable diseases we use urine for glucose two hours after a meal fasting sugar or random blood sugar as a screening test then as a confirmatory test we use standard oral glucose test two hours after giving 75 grams of glucose load we do the standard oral glucose test under national program for prevention and control of diabetes be very sure doctor tomorrow examiner will ask will you do hba1c will you do oral glucose tolerance test what will you do don't answer hba1c under the national program recommendation is oral glucose tolerance test 
that's what you need to remember under national cancer control program what is the screening test for carcinoma cervix it is the visual inspection with acetic acid when you do colposcopy colposcopy you will be using the acetic acid and visually inspect for the dysplastic areas is the most reliable method refractive errors under national program for the control of the blindness how often do you do screening for refractive errors doctor every 6 months it is not 9 months 3 months 12 months it is 6 months should be your precise answer in the tomorrow's exam under national oral health care program what are included oral health education strengthening of the oral health setup at district level phc and community health centers is pap smear useful for endometrial cancer no not much useful it is only useful for cervical cancer is what you have to remember endometrial cancer screening how do you do we use ultrasound office endometrial washings color flow imaging they are all used for endometrial cancer screening is ca125 alone is it useful for ovarian cancer no sir not useful because ca125 has a lot of false positive results unnecessarily those who don't have ovarian cancer will be blamed is what you need to remember only in the late stages of the ovarian cancer ca125 levels increase that is the reason ca125 plus ultrasound this is considered to be a good screening test for ovarian cancer is what you have to remember so what are all the tumors where ca125 is a marker ovarian cancer is most common endometrial cancer fallopian tube cancer breast cancer lung cancer gat cancer pancreatic cancer in all this ca125 is considered to be a very very important marker so doctor you should remember totally 60000 points high yield facts are they covering 19 subjects we will take one hour for 100 points 600 hours for 60000 points first round and the 60000 high yield points i will give you as 2500 pages of printed study material please do join for our uh, 12 months long term course do call 9000868356 our helpline number they will help you to join every day two hours in the evening every sunday a full scale grant test morning 9 am to 12 pm 12 to 3 we will have a discussion 52 sundays 52 full scale grant test with discussion plus 600 hours of combined study in the next 10 months we will revise all the 19 subjects and also you have 2500 pages notes ek martaba isko hamare saath baith ke padhai kare to definitely you are going to crack a top rank in the entrance exam doctor now let us be very sure on some of the common terminologies primary definitive host who is he secondary intermediate host the host in which sexual stage passes is called primary a sexual stage or larval stage is called secondary or intermediate host abhi aa gaya batti marne wala item malaria caused by plasmodium primary host is anopheles secondary host is man 
Tape on tinea solium, primary host is, uh, sorry, prior, secondary host is pig. Tape on, see, tinea solium, primary host is man, not anopolis, man. Tinea sigineta, primary host is man, secondary host is cattle. Guinea worm, dracunculus medinesis, primary host is man, secondary host is cyclops. Filariasis, Eucararia bankrupti, primary host is man, secondary host is culex. Hyrated disease, Echinococcus, Echinococcus. Primary host is dog, secondary host is sheep, cattle and man. Sleeping sickness, Trypanosoma. Primary host is man, secondary host is CC fly. That is what you have to emphatically remember, doctor. So will you promise me that you will remember? Yes. Obligate host. Obligate is what? I have an obligation for you. Means you are the only fellow who can give me a little uh, loan. So the only host for a parasite. Man in the measles is the only host. Man in the typhoid fever is the only host. There is no pig, no cattle, no dog, no cat, no rat. Only man is the host. That's what you need to remember about obligate. Transport host. A host in which the organism remains alive, but it does not undergo any development is called transport host. Peratonic host. It is very similar to intermediate host, only that it is not needed for the parasite's developmental cycle to progress. Frog, snakes, birds, mice, they're all common paratonic host is what you need to remember. Then how does paratonic host differ from reservoir? Reservoir host is a primary host, whereas paratonic host serve as a dump for the non-mature stages of the parasite, which they can accumulate in high numbers. That's called paratonic host. Dead-end host, a intermediate host, which does generally not allow transmission to the definite host, thereby preventing the parasite from completing its development. That is called dead-end host. So, you can see horses, humans sometimes can become dead-end host. One of the example, humans are the dead-end host for Echinococcus granulosa, tape pods, is what you have to remember. Now, what are the various arboviral infections in India? You know, the group A, group B, arboviral infections, Group A are called alpha viruses. Group B are flaviviruses. So, Sindhbis, Chikungunya are group A alpha virus. Group B, flavivirus, Japanese encephalitis, KFD, dengue, and West Nile fever in India. Now comes the mother of all infections that we are successfully able to eradicate. Smallpox. One of the favorite questions of the examiner is how we could eradicate the smallpox? What is the secret behind eradicating the smallpox? Smallpox has no known animal reservoir, no long term carrier state. Infection provides lifelong immunity. Case detection is simple because there is a rash. Subclinical cases did not transmit the disease. And a highly effective vaccine, international cooperation, they all made us to successfully eradicate the smallpox is what you need to remember. Now coming to the chicken pox. Chicken pox is also called varicella. Varicella joster virus, human herpes virus 3, HHV, HHV 3. Incubation period is 14 to 16 days. Source of infection is a case, person to person contact. 
Eight droplets are mainly responsible. And one to two days is period of communicability before the rash and four to five days after the appearance of the rash is a period of communicability. Secondary attack rate is 90%. The seven points about chicken pox. Mutti mein rehna hai aapke liye. Right? Now, doctor, how do you describe the chicken pox rash? Chicken pox rash. You drop on a rose petal. Try to think a bit romantically. Rose petal ke wo par ju drop ke jese. Centripetal distribution is the typical distribution. Pleomorphic rash, all stages of the rash, vesicles, pustules, papules, all kinds. Superficial and unilocular inflammation around the vesicles. It affects flexor surfaces. It involves the axilla. It spares the palms. It spares the soles. There's a rapid evolution and the scab will form four to seven days after the onset of chicken pox is what you have to remember. But a smallpox rash is centrifugal, fugal, non-pleomorphic, only one same, same stage rash, deep-seated, multilocular, no inflammation around vesicles, extensor surfaces outside not flexor, extensor surface. It spares the axilla. Slow in evolution. Scabs form 10 to 14 days is the smallpox rash. Now what is the most common late complication of chicken pox? Shingles, which is caused by the reactivation of the virus, decades after the initial episode of the chicken pox is what you need to remember. So chicken pox, varicella, joster are one and same. Right? So varicella, joster is reactivated chicken pox is what you need to be very, very sure about. So what is the most rapid way by which you can make a diagnosis of chicken pox, doctor? Look at the vesicle fluid under electron microscope you get round particles, round particles. In first trimester of pregnancy, if mother has chicken pox, newborn baby has the highest chance of getting congenital varicella, is what you need to remember. And there is a live attenuated chicken pox vaccine. Okay, yes, strain that gives zero conversion more than 90%. Varicella joster immunoglobulin. Immunoglobulin is all passive immunity. It is given within 72 hours of exposure, 1.25 to 5 ml intramuscularly. It is reserved for those immunosuppressed contacts who contacted the acute cases. Similarly, for the newborn contacts, we give varicella joster immunoglobulin is what you need to remember. Then comes the measles, which you need to remember. Measles is rubiola. It is the RNA paramyxovirus. 10 to 14 days is the incubation period. Cases are the source of infection. There are no carriers in measles. One of the favorite MCQ of the examiner. Eight droplets is the mode. Four days before and five days after the appearance of the rash is the time of communicability of the measles is what you need to remember. Rash is retroauricular in origin. Measles is highly infectious, especially during prodromal period and during the time of eruption. Ek bar measles aagaya to lifelong immunity. There are no second attacks in measles. Then if a measles person connects with another measles person, 
what is the secondary attack rate 80 percent is the secondary attack rate measles show cyclical trend increase every two to three years and what is pathognomonic clinical feature doctor complex parts on the buccal mucosa opposite the upper second molar is pathognomonic of the measles so what is the most common complication of measles in young children otitis media otitis media subacute sclerosing pan encephalitis but very 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 rare complication of the measles so measles vaccine is live attenuated Edmonston, in Jagreb, Quares, Moratin, they're all the strains. And WHO recommends passive immunization using the measles immunoglobulin, 0.25 ml per kg body weight. So what is WHO's measles elimination strategy? Catch up, keep up, follow up catch up keep up follow up catch up keep up follow up catch up nationwide vaccination campaign targeting all the children between the age group of 9 months to 14 years irrespective of their history of measles disease or vaccination status keep up routine vaccination to 95% of the born children should receive the measles vaccine follow up Nationwide vaccination programs, campaigns conducted every two to four years, targeting usually all the children born after the catch-up campaign. That is a follow-up. By a measles ko agar hum is dunya se nikal dena bole to challenges kya hota hai? Measles and poor immunity. They attract each other. So, weak immunization systems is a big challenge to eliminate. Highly infectious is measles. A lot of people show refusal to immunization. Then measles ko bacho me control kareto. It is increasing among adolescents and adults, changing epidemiology. You have to give catch-up immunization to almost more than 130 million children, which makes it a big challenge. Human and financial resources at country, regional and global levels. They are the challenges for controlling the measles. So accelerated measles mortality reduction strategy by WHO UNICEF. Two doses of measles to all the children, one routine and supplementary immunization activity is required. So what are the global measles elimination targets thought by 2015? Give routine vaccine coverage more than 90% nationally. Routine vaccine coverage more than 80% district level. Reduction and annual maintenance of incidence less than 5 cases. And measles mortality reduced by 95% is called global measles. Elimination target is what you need to remember. So, doctor, with this, let us conclude the today's evening. Every day evening, we will try to keep up a little longer session. So, please do come inform your classmates. Thank you very much.